J.D. Vance's remarks strike a chord with a segment of the public that echoes his concerns about leadership and accountability. His outspoken criticism of Kamala Harris and staunch support for Donald Trump resonate with those who believe the current administration has failed to protect American lives and has been inadequate in its response to these failures. However, while Vance's fiery rhetoric galvanizes his base, it risks alienating moderates and left-leaning individuals who may find his approach overly harsh or disrespectful. Yet this rhetoric is a calculated move to energize his supporters by framing the current administration as not just incompetent, but morally culpable for the loss of life. One, could you tell us more about the altercation that happened at the Arlington Cemetery? Um, and two, uh, what does debate prep look like for yourself and for Trump at this time? Well, I, I think, first of all, the altercation at Arlington Cemetery is the media creating a story where I really don't think there is one. There is verifiable evidence. There is, there is verifiable evidence that the campaign was allowed to have a photographer there. There's verifiable, they were invited to have a photographer there. There's verifiable evidence that the families of these poor people who had their loved ones die three years ago at Abbey Road, they had... I mean, Abby Gate, those 13 Americans, a lot of them were there with the president. They invited him to be there and to support them. That's not an insult to the memories of their loved ones. They wanted Donald Trump there. And thank God that we have a president who stands with our veterans instead of one who runs away from them. Now, we. Now, it, yeah, I mean, it, it is it is amazing to me that you have apparently somebody at Arlington Cemetery, some staff member, had a little disagreement with somebody, and they have turned, the media has turned this into a national news story. You know what I think our veterans care a lot more about? That Kamala Harris's VP nominee lied about his military service. I think that our veterans care a lot more about that. And the other thing that our veterans care, the other thing our veterans care a lot more about is that three years ago, 13 brave, innocent Americans died and they died because Kamala Harris refused to do her job, and there hasn't been a single investigation or a single firing. I, I don't, I don't, look, sometimes mistakes happen. That's just the nature of government, the nature of military service. But to have those 13 Americans lose their lives and not fire a single person is disgraceful. Kamala Harris is disgraceful. We're going to talk about a story out of those 13 brave, innocent Americans who lost their lives. It's that Kamala Harris is so asleep at the wheel that she won't even do an investigation into what happened. And she wants to yell at Donald Trump because he showed up. She can, she can go to hell. Vance underscores the importance of responsibility and leadership, particularly in his criticism of Kamala Harris for not investigating the incident that led to the deaths of 13 U.S. soldiers. His stance reflects a broader demand for justice and transparency in government, resonating with those who believe leaders should be held accountable for their decisions, especially when lives are at stake. Vance's blunt approach, exemplified by his statement that Kamala Harris can go to hell, channels the frustration and moral outrage that many conservatives feel towards leaders they perceive as neglecting their duties or acting against the country's interests. This directness appeals to a conservative base that values plain, unvarnished truth over diplomatic language. Vance's call for accountability and truth in the wake of the soldiers' deaths is seen as a demand for those in power to own up to their failures and the consequences of their policies. His remarks can be interpreted as an expression of existential anxiety about leadership's impact on life and death, highlighting a refusal to confront reality as a core concern. When Vance says Harris can go to hell, it can be viewed as a rejection of the perceived moral failure to acknowledge the gravity of the situation. His words tap into a collective grief and anger that many Americans feel over lives lost in military conflict, especially when those losses are seen as the result of misguided leadership. Ultimately, Vance's rhetoric serves to draw in those who feel neglected by the current administration, using strong moral language to evoke empathy and rally support among the public who distrust or despise the current leadership.